Gentlemen, so you woke up today wanting to buy yourself your very first pair of formal shoes and just as you're about to dash out the door, you're like, wait, what, what color shoe am I even gonna buy? Should it be black? Should it be brown? What style shoe should it be? Should it be a Balmar Oxford? A blucher? Should it be a derby shoe? Should it be a double monk strap? Should it be a double wing tip? Should it have broguing or not? Should it be a cap toe? Well, gentlemen, in this video, I cover exactly that. What is up gentlemen, it's your goodness here coming at you with yet another video drop and in today's video we're looking at shoes and more specifically formal shoes. So hear me out. Shoes, they're a men's staple. There is no outfit that is complete without them. And studies have actually shown that the first thing that someone notices when they see you is, guess what? Your shoes. So it's very important that you get those first few purchasing decisions right in order to make a very good first impression. And without wasting too much of your time, if that sounds interesting, let's get into it. Now the first shoe you're gonna buy is going to be your most Formal and nothing says formal more than the Bal Morale Oxford. Now the reason why you're gonna want this shoe to be very formal is you want to be able to wear these shoes or this particular shoe with your suit. So the Bal Morale Oxford comes with a whole bunch of different styles. Um, for starters, you can have a whole cut dress shoe, which is just an entire slab of uncut leather that wraps around the shoe and is only fastened at the back of the shoe or you could go for something a little bit more played down but very formal which is going to be a cap toe like the one I have here and the cap is what you see here this is what you call the cap toe and it's a Balmoral Oxford because it has what we call a closed lacing system I will show an analogy in the second shoe and uh, this particular pair is from a brand known as Churches. It's a British brand. So whenever you're looking for your very formal, clean and slick uh, types of shoes, I recommend you go buy a British shoe because that's what they're good at. And the third variation of this Balmoral Oxford is going to be probably another cap toe, right? Except they're going to have a little bit of broguing right by the cap there and broguing kind of makes the shoe a little bit more casual but you can still pull it off with a suit and i suggest that your first shoe should be black since black goes with every single color out there let's move on to shoe number two now the second shoe you're going to want to buy for yourself is a derby or a blue chuck now the difference between a derby and a blue chair is very negligible so for the purpose of the video we're gonna scrap that okay so i'm gonna suggest that for your blue chair or your derby you get yourself a brown shoe now the reason why i say so is because the derby is kind of like your sweet in between shoe and you're going to be wearing this the most now the reason is going to be it's still formal enough to wear with a suit but is typically dressed down to wear with your chinos, your dark pair of jeans, your old trousers and your sports jacket. Now because it's typically dressed down you kind of have a bit more room in terms of design. You could go for uh, a double wingtip like the one I have here. Why it's called a wingtip is as you can see this little tip here has a wing on it. You could go for a double wingtip, you could go for a shoe that has broguing on it uh, and broguing typically makes the shoe a bit more casual. Now broguing is going to be these little dots that you see on the shoe. It's all over this one as you can see. So this is going to be a bit more casual. I can wear this with my jeans, my chinos and so forth. Now the main difference between a derby or blucher and the first shoe we covered, which is a Balmoral Oxford, is the lacing system. These have an open lacing system, whilst the Balmoral Oxfords have a closed lacing system. 
Give me a moment, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we have the Balmoral Oxford that I showed you before, right? So this is a closed lacing system. The reason why it's called a closed lacing system, as you can see at the top here, it's fastened, right? And you cannot take out this little filler here, the tongue, out of here. So it's going to be more formal because of that reason. Because when you lace it up, it's going to look nice and clean for your suits. Now, when you're looking at uh, the bluchers or the derbies, they have an open lacing system. As you can see here, open. And you can take the tongue right out. There you go. That's something you can tell your friends that I'm willing to bet they never knew. So in the general world, a shoe that's probably considered as casual is something like a pair of Vans. But in the men's formal world, a shoe that's considered as casual is going to be a slip-on. And one such example of a slip-on is the third shoe that I recommend that you buy, and that's going to be the loafer. And more specifically, the classic penny loafer. So in the world of slip-on shoes, you have a hell of a lot to work with here. You can go from your standard penny loafer, to your tassel loafer, to your driving moccasins, to your monk straps or even your double monk straps. Now the reason why I said you should go for a penny loafer is because that this design has transcended time. And I'm willing to bet will be relevant for as long as slip-on shoes are relevant now the reason why they call it a penny loafer is as you can see on the front here if it can focus on it a bit it has this little opening this gap and you can slip a penny right in it's like a piggy bank now the purpose of these slip-on shoes apart from being stylish is as the name entails they say you're rushing somewhere all you have to do is slip your foot right in and get going the reason is they have no laces so it's not a hassle now because of this these are going to be your most casual shoes trust me this is as casual as they get now because they're so casual you can have a little fun you can uh, have them in a nice suede color like these lock l1s which I believe is a British company, if I'm not mistaken. Or you could go uh, suede blue even. You know, a bit of accessories there, a little bit of that gold. Like I said, these are very casual, so you can have a little bit of fun. You can wear these with your jeans. You can wear these with your chinos. I even, I've even worn uh, this pair with shorts and a shirt. They are that casual. So you can still wear these shoes with a suit but if you're going to go with black and simple and make sure it's a penny but then I wouldn't recommend it if you're going to go see a very high profile person who knows a little bit about fashion because they might just call you out on it and that's it for today's video guys hope you enjoyed it and if you did how about you drop us a like down below and uh, in future videos I might just go over the different construction styles of shoes which may get you to understand why some $1,000 shoes actually cost $1,000 and why a $50 shoe costs $50. If you're interested in that, how about you put that in the comment section below and also put in the comment section below what is your favorite style or type of shoe that you own? What's your most expensive pair of shoes that you own? Call me curious, but I want to know. Also leave that in the comment below and if it's your first time here on this channel, we cover fashion style tips and give fashion advice to help you become more fashionable. So if your style is street, dapper, or even smart casual, you might want to consider subscribing. Otherwise, that's it for me today. I'll see you all next time. And until then, keep it fashionable. Peace.